Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to continue with the uh, Omron MX2 driver. We're going to be checking out the drive in remote control, uh, going with 2-wire control and 3-wire control and also we'll be checking out how to get uh, a remote speed control going, basically a potentiometer. If by any chance you have missed the last video where we checked out the drive, or well, commissioned the drive, checked out the drive and did all the reviewing and and uh, to the terminals and uh, do the local run. That video is going to be in the description below. So uh, any other manuals, anything else that I believe that would benefit you in any possible way, and also any other videos that I would think would benefit you in a possible way, it'll be in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. <music> Here we are, so our first station in it is in, and I tell you what guys, this drive is packed with cheeses also, a lot of functions, a lot of things you can do, there are intelligent inputs in many different ways, of course we're not going to have a chance to cover nowhere near the fraction of it, but I will do cover the most basic and most things that could, you could use potentially uh, to work with. So the first station we're going to start is pretty much going to look like that which I usually do, is for a very standard uh, two-wire control station, which starts with a forward run, run reverse, jog and a speed, and also we will have a e-stop that will trip out the drive. It's gonna, gonna come in as external trip. And I'll show you in a minute how that is done. So for the wiring, we have a uh, terminal P24 coming to our uh, no, uh, normally close contact, which is our e-stop. And as you can see, I have number, number two in down there, and that number two is going back to terminal three, which by default is normally open contact for a uh, uh, external trip, as you can see. But because my contact is closed in here, it's not tripping. I'll show you how, the, how you can reverse those contacts. So from there on, you can sort of send the power to all the switches. So, so we get the run forward, run reverse, jog, and obviously uh, jog ex uh, 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 another button to ex uh, activate whichever way you want to jog. Because this jog requires the run signal. Any of those run signals, run reverse, the run forward, can be used. So you have to activate the jog, and you have to activate any of the run signals. So uh, unfortunately, there is no option. At least I couldn't find it. Maybe there is an option. At least I couldn't find it where you can remove that so you can just use one switch for it. So uh, yeah, so and then uh, run forwards is our uh, terminal one, uh, run reverse is our terminal uh, two, and jog is our terminal seven. Everything is default, you don't need to have to change much, pretty much everything we do in here. For this uh, station, it is uh, set to a default. When it comes down to what I just did per, for external trip, as you can see, I have permanently sending signal back down to a terminal uh, 3. And by default, terminal 3 is normally open contact, so when it receives power, it would go off, uh, basically trip out. But as you can see, now it's in reverse. And to do that, you can actually reverse your uh, switches, which is in the page 154 in the manual. As you can see down here, we can change any of the multi-functional uh, inputs to work as normal open or normally closed contacts. So all I did is change C13 to normally closed, so now it can operate with normally closed a switch on it. So that's how uh, we have uh, set the station up when our normally closed emergency switch is working. As soon as the power will disappear from terminal 3, it will trip out. So, uh, oh yes, and when it comes down to a uh, potentiometer, obviously we've got the potentiometer in here, which is, uh, zoom in, nah, here we go, maybe like that. So here we go, three terminals are coming out, and we are using a uh, voltage for it. So uh, it will go into H, and uh, then it's gonna go into zero, and then it's gonna go into L right here on the bottom. I know we look, well, weird because it's got L up there as well. Now it's just a bottom L, L, O and H. That will be for your voltage. So that's where your uh, potentiometer in, uh, is going into it. And when it comes to, uh, down to jog button and uh, things like an accelerations, the accelerations, things like that, uh, a lot of them you can do uh, accelerations and the, uh, the acceleration, the first one you can really do in F. If I can remember where it was. Ooh, I just overshot that. And in F, I think it's two, yeah, it's an uh, acceleration, and F3, oh, it's gonna be deacceleration. So you can see I set them both for a uh, run. 
So uh, let's just get back to the... And regarding uh, setting up your jog, uh, what sort of a uh, parameters you need to use to adjust it, uh, if you want to change the jog uh, frequency and uh, if I can find on this page where I wrote those parameter numbers down and I can't seem to do that. Found it. It's 8:38, and that uh, so, and 8:39. But do check out 8:39. So there's a bit more to it. But 8:38, if you want to change your joke frequency, uh, you can do that in uh, there. So uh, let me put on the cover and let's check it out. Here we are. So uh, and one more thing, last uh, to remember is make sure that your A1, uh, the frequency source is on 01, and A2, your frequency, uh, no, your run command is on 01 as well. So both on 01. So, so uh, here we are. So here's our uh, station. So to start the drive, put it into the a uh, uh, forward run, and you can have a uh, easy control with your a uh, potentiometer. If you try to put uh, both of them on, of course it's not going to work, by removing one of them it will uh, go in reverse and obviously the jog and as you can see the motor, as you can see down there, motor is in a free run. So you can select that in 30, uh, A39 I believe, we can select how you want the jog to stop, so at the moment it's in a free. As I let go it just releases, releases, releases let the motor go in a free to coast to stop so you can change that and it alters in different ways you want to stop it so that's pretty much how the jog would work hopefully that is all making sense of course again there's a ton of there's a pretty cool drive it's got a lot of a lot of functionalities into it so definitely do check it out so next one well next up is three wire control here we go three wire control is in so this is what the station is going to look like Start, stop, and then we're going to be changing a uh, clicking to go in reverse if we wish to. And obviously this button first is going to be run forwards. If you flip that forward, it's going to go in the reverse. And we're also going to be using a, a speed controller and e-stop, which I failed to show you just uh, in a previous clip. I'll show that in a minute how that really works. So yeah, so that's the station. Uh, Wiring-wise, what we've got in here is uh, we have uh, again we have our uh, normally closed contact which is our e-stop sending a signal back to our terminal 3 and also going to the another normally closed contact which uh, comes through and is sending back another uh, another cable in here after normally closed contact for the stop button that one's going to go back to terminal 2 and then we see terminal 1 is going to be our start button and uh, terminal 4 this guy in here which is uh, leaving in here that's going to be our selection between uh, uh, forward and reverse. So that's pretty much that. And then obviously we have a uh, partechiometer, which is uh, still very much the same as it was uh, before. But when it comes down to creating this kind of system, we need to reconfigure three terminal inputs. So uh, and I'm not going to show you in a minute. In the page 156, as you can see down here, so you get a three wire start, stop, and a three wire forward and reverse. So pretty much we are need to assign these functions to all of these three uh, digital inputs, and they can be any. So I use one, two, and four, and we still have five, six, and seven left over, guys. Remember that you can still program them to do whatever you want. You want to have a jog, you can have multi, uh, multi frequency setups, and things like that, which, are, by the way, is coming up in the next video. We're going to be checking out how to do that. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, and to do that you need to go to C and C one two three four five six and a seven is uh, pretty much uh, to corresponding to one two three four five six seven in here and each one of them you can add any of these digits and guys there is ton I mean there is approximately four or five pages of options these digital inputs can do. Omron did not get shy about putting a ton of options and that you can do with these inputs and things like that. So, oh yeah, do check them out. So, as you can see in here, I've got 20 in there, 21 in there, 12 still there for the external trip, and a fourth, I have 22. So pretty much once I entered all of them in, so the whole system is pretty much ready to go. So that's pretty much all the things you need to do. Let's just get out of this. Oh, I just skipped that one. All you need to do to really get, uh, get this system running. So let me put the cover on and I'll show you how that works. 
here we are so the cover is on so the way it works press the start there you go it latches the input in and then you'll be able to control your speed the way you like want like it this is the most preferred for a lot of people people love this kind of setups three wire control and by flipping the switch it will be going opposite there you go so that's pretty much what happens so look what happens when you are to, uh, in an in event uh, emergency there we go drive uh, motor goes completely in a free run it isolates the output and it's pretty much uh, doing nothing so once you release it uh, you will request you to reset the drive so uh, all you need to do in here click the reset button on there and it will reset it and you can have external reset button to your station if you wish so you can do that as well so so uh, it's depending again on your application. Remember, all those inputs are highly configurable to whatever you like. And uh, and Omron has, as I say again, did not get shy about giving you options for pretty much, well, whatever you can come up with, I'll tell you that. So that will do, ladies and gentlemen. This is two, three wire control for this drive. Of course, we only covered the fraction of what this, what this drive is capable to do. But this is the most general thing that people will use. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you liked the video, please smash that like. If you didn't, smash the dislike. Comment below any questions, anything you would like to know. And find out what it is. Do ask them in the description below. And I will answer them as soon and as accurate as I can. And don't forget to check out the description for all your manuals and uh, any related videos that I think would, uh, would help you out. We may do make sure to check that uh, description out. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.